Hi, I'm Kate, an educator at the Rockwell Museum in Corning, New York. Today, this video is gonna talk about artists engaging with activism around the core issue of social justice. A lot of artists use their creative expression to engage with activism about topics that are really important to them. Art can serve a lot of functions in our society. Maybe it's something that is just for the individual to express themselves. Maybe it's something that beautifies a community. And sometimes, you know, it functions as activism to call attention to important issues. The artwork that we're gonna to use to talk about this issue today is right here next to me. It's called The Emancipation Approximation, number five. It's by the artist Kara Walker, and it's in the permanent collection of the Rockwell Museum. Kara Walker is a printmaker, painter, sculptor, installation, and video artist who has work that is known for engaging with topics of sexuality and violence in the antebellum South and the Civil War. Kara Walker was born in California and moved with her family to Atlanta at the age of 13. She says that living in Atlanta, the Civil War started to be something that she thought of as an internal conflict. She said that when she was growing up in California, race wasn't really something that she thought about a whole lot. But living in Atlanta and being black and being surrounded by the history of the Civil War all the time really made it a lot harder for her to ignore and not think about it. She lived in Atlanta until she finished with college and then eventually received an MFA from the Rhode Island School of Design and ever since then has won countless awards for her fine art. She's best known for the use of the cut paper silhouette. The image that we're looking at today borrows from that kind of genre. It's actually a silk screen print. And what that means is that it's made with a stencil. So there's no cut out necessarily. It's not cut and pasted on this image here, but she's still working with that same style to get the same points across. The silhouette is an art medium that was popularized in the 1800s in Victorian times. It was kind of brilliant at the time and something that high society folks or middle class people could use to have a likeness of somebody in their home. Having a portrait painted would have been very, very expensive and out of the reach of most families. So the silhouette was a way that folks could obtain, you know, a picture of a child or a loved one. And, you know, of course it's just cut paper, so much less expensive than um, a painting. And obviously we know that photography was not factored into the situation at that point in time in the Victorian period. And so it was really popularized at that time. What Kara Walker does to kind of appropriate this cut paper genre is very interesting because at the time there was nothing controversial about it. Although it kind of takes away some details, at the same time we're left with different details, right? So you can see the shape of somebody's facial features very prominently, that's kind of all we have to focus on in a silhouette. Or perhaps their body type or their body size, it's very obvious and you know anything else about them kind of goes by the wayside. So Walker has kind of figured out that this silhouette, this nice, simple, kind of innocuous, innocent medium could be used to sort of twist our view and make us realize that when we're looking at, at these images, we kind of start to fill in the blanks with our own implicit biases that we've been socialized to have and learn. And so she's done a very interesting thing by appropriating um, an art form that was never meant to be kind of controversial or stir any uh, stir anything up. Kara Walker's work has stirred controversy for that reason because she doesn't denounce any of those uh, racial stereotypes that can come up when she uses this medium because she leaves it up to the viewer to kind of pick up on it or not. She doesn't denounce it. She doesn't explicitly call it out and say that it's bad and for that reason her work has been pretty controversial. We can look at some of the specifics of this and this artwork that we're going to talk about today. So again this is number five from the Emancipation Approximation series and again we see that she's using this silhouette so the figures are dark we don't see the color of their eyes or the fabric of their clothes. We just see their silhouette, their outlines. It looks like they're silhouetted, like a bright light is behind them and we can only see the outline of their body, right? That's, that's what it looks like visually. There are two figures in this image. One is this little figure and one is this much larger figure. 
When we look at it, it's easy to assume that the smaller figure is trying to get the larger figure's attention, maybe wants it to follow somewhere. We see this gesture of like, come, come this way, and the pointing, it looks like it's in motion. But when we look at the larger figure, there doesn't seem to be any acknowledgement or recognition that this is happening. And when we think about what we know about art and perspective, we know that making something smaller is a way to make it farther away. And we don't have any landscape, there's no context to make any sense of what is going on in this picture. So for all we know, really, these might not be standing next to each other. There's not enough information to tell how they relate to each other, if they relate to each other at all. And then if we focus in on this larger figure, we start to see more about how these silhouettes start to stir up some of these implicit biases. Because we can make all these assumptions about this figure without having a lot of detail about what they actually look like. For example, it looks like to me, like this is sort of a caricature of a person that's trying to dress fancy and wear nice clothes. We see the top hat, this kind of tie here around the collar, and these boots, so it looks like maybe there's a little heel on this boot, and the pocket watch, which is something that I personally at least tend to associate with somebody who is, you know, dressed up kind of fancy. It stirs for us these ideas of somebody trying to dress sophisticated. But then we look again, and we see this jacket it looks frayed back here. It looks very choppy, and additionally, it doesn't lay flat at all. It juts out at this very strange angle, which, you know, personally, I would think that that's not something that's very well made, or the fabric is something that's really harsh. It just doesn't look like something that would be comfortable to wear. And on that topic, you know, the whole ensemble is really skin tight, right? which is not something that we associate with being dressed up or fancy or looking sophisticated. So here you can really see how Kara Walker's work forces us to confront our kind of expectations about what we think somebody maybe should look like or shouldn't look like, or just our own implicit biases, racial biases especially. And again, Kara Walker is controversial because she doesn't explicitly denounce any sort of misrepresentation. She puts the misrepresentation out there for us and kind of forces us to sit with our own discomfort in that. Similarly, by working with imagery that calls us back to this time period, again, of the antebellum South and the Civil War, it forces us to think about how representations from the past inform what we think in the present. Kind of forces us, again, to fill in the blanks in our own heads with what we have been taught or have learned or just have, through osmosis, socialized in our lives. And it shows us that even if we think that we're very open-minded, those thoughts still creep in. And so even the most open-minded person, we still have a lot of work to do when it comes to combating our implicit biases and systemic racism and prejudice. What I like about this artwork specifically is that it forces us not only to confront our biases, etc., but it also forces us to confront our discomfort with not having tidy answers to life's questions and problems. How does it do that? Well, I mentioned that this work is one of a series. The Emancipation Approximation is a whole series. So that's a number of artworks that all belong to the same kind of narrative or are linked in some way. This is number five out of 27 of these artworks. So while we could interpret the narrative here based on the visual cues that we do have, it's still missing 90% of its context. And what we know from Kara Walker's work is that even if we had all 27 of those images lined up, we still probably wouldn't have enough information to understand the narrative, the story, what's going on, how are those things all linked together, what's happening in those pictures. And that's because she's very deliberate about giving us scant, unclear information. She just gives us a little bit at a time. She doesn't tell us the whole story. And why would she do that? What reason would an artist have for keeping some of that from us, from the viewer? Why wouldn't they want us to just fully understand what they were trying to say? One of our staff members here at the Rockwell Museum wrote a little bit about this artwork for a project that we did here at the museum. 
And what he wrote about is the artwork in the context of the social unrest that we've experienced in 2020, which of course we know has been going on in this country for much longer than 2020, but certainly came to a head and, and the forefront this year for us. So he wrote about it through that lens. I'm gonna read a little bit about what he wrote for you. The viewer is left to fill the frame with their own experiences, interpretations, and understanding of the world that Walker's characters inhabit. In our world, where everything is increasingly seen as in black and white, it is more important than ever to realize that a completely blank backdrop doesn't look the same to everyone. So she's not giving us the answers. It's important to realize that sometimes we will not have all the information. Sometimes it won't be obvious how we can make life easier or better for somebody else especially if we've never walked a mile in their shoes. What Kara Walker's work, especially this work here with its black and white and lack of a background, lack of any sort of setting, what it really does is just shows us that there might be times where even if something seems completely black and white, there might be gray areas that we either just can't see, they're not available to us, or even if we are able to see them, we can't understand. And that's okay. It's not a reason to shy away from the work of social justice, for example. And creating artwork like this, what it does for us is it helps us to get a little bit more comfortable because we've seen something like this before. We've felt that emotion of, hmm, you know, that's not adding up for me. I don't get it. And then, you know, we either move on, we stay and ponder it, but it gives us a little bit of familiarity with that feeling. In that way, you know, in addition to us kind of sitting with the thoughts that come up for us, whether it's racial biases or gender biases, leaving out some of that information helps us to see our world in a new way. So we appreciate you watching this video and we hope that you'll take a look at the other one in our series. We also have a lesson plan for you where you can use collage to try out some of these ideas um, and think about how you can use history to send a message about what we're living in right now about the present. Thank you so much for watching.